Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about supplements. Um, my name is Bobby Horner. I am the registered dietitian at Odom Health and Wellness. For those of you that maybe have not met me before, um, welcome. I hope everybody's staying safe on another snowy day. For me, I'm, I don't know if I'm liking it that much or not, or if I'm just kind of ready for spring. So, um, but it is pretty out there. So today we are going to talk about supplements. It's a popular topic for people. Most people I know are taking at least one supplement. Um, and so things we're going to cover today. Oh, one second here. Um, one second. Um, so we're going to talk about what are supplements exactly? Who may need to be taking them? Um, if there's a difference in brands, quality um, compared to price, uh, what supplements should we be taking if there's a difference between males, females, um, benefits and cautions when taking supplements. And I will leave some time at the end for questions for you guys too, if they pop up. So just know that, um, hold your questions for the end and I'll be happy to uh, save some time and answer all of those for you guys. Um, so let's get started. Whoop, I went too far. Um, so what is a supplement? When we look at it, it's a product taken orally that contains one or more ingredients, such as vitamins or amino acids. It's intended to supplement one's diet, but is not considered food. Um, so supplements are not food and they aren't meant to be any sort of food replacement. They are to help your body acquire essential vitamins and minerals that may be missed through food that we eat. So when I'm working with people, I'm always looking at diet first, seeing, okay, can we achieve all these results through the foods we eat? Or are we gonna have to supplement? So what I always say is food is best, but when food is not enough, that's when we look at supplementation. And I'll talk about some of those reasons why we may need to supplement with people. Um, so when supplements may be necessary, if somebody has a poor overall diet um, or low, they eat a lot of low nutrient dense foods, what that means is that they don't eat a lot of fruits, vegetables, whole grains. They're eating a lot of processed carbs a lot of foods that don't, are not high in vitamins and minerals, um, they may be calorie dense, but not what we say would be nutrient dense foods. Um, if they have nutrient imbalances that cannot be resolved as food alone, um, if somebody has cut out certain foods or food groups, for example, if somebody is a vegetarian or a vegan, um, or if somebody has gone off of dairy, um, we have to look at sometimes supplementation to fill those gaps. Other people eat the same foods over and over again, I can be very guilty of this where I get in a very strong pattern with food and it becomes easy. And I'm like, well, this works for me. I'll eat the same thing for breakfast and lunch all week. Um, if somebody has a dislike for fruits and vegetables, if they're an extremely picky eater, um, digestion issues, which we'll go into a little bit more too. Um, if we have a lot of digestion issues, sometimes we are not absorbing our foods very well, which means we're not absorbing the vitamins, minerals from them that well. So sometimes we have to add extra in through supplementation. That goes along with the malabsorption issues, maybe due to a chronic condition too. Um, if we are under a lot of stress, um, some people don't know that when we are under high stress, we burn through a lot of vitamins and minerals a lot faster than if we were not. Um, and so high stress individuals, sometimes we need to, like I said, um, kind of help support the body through the stress, but also add in some extra nutrients. Um, increased nutrient needs to a certain condition, our food does have lower nutrient amounts than it used to, to a poor topsoil, not vegetarian crops, long transport time, um, mass producing, and also living in certain areas of country, for example, like vitamin D, right? It's a sunshine vitamin, which we'll talk more in depth in, on in a little bit, but we just can't get enough of that through the sun up here. So sometimes everybody living up north may need to be on a supplement such as vitamin D. So there are precautions with supplements though. So they are not regulated by the FDA. Um, we wanna look very close, closely at the quality of the supplement. I cannot stress that enough. The next slide is gonna look, tell us what we wanna look for when getting a supplement. Um, claims that seem too good to be true. I hear this a lot, like it will increase my energy or it will help me lose weight. A lot of people ask me like, what supplement can I take that will make me lose weight? If there was one, we would all be taking it. We would all be the perfect weight, right? So a lot of times those claims are just too good to be true. They're looking to sell you on it because their claims a lot of times are not regulated. Um, also with dosage. So I want you to know that more is not always better. Just like with everything in life, we're looking to find our body is looking to find that right balance to make sure that it has the proper amount that it can function at its highest level. 
We also want to look for if you're on medications, any medication interactions that you might have along with it. Um, another thing that you guys should know in food and in supplements, natural is not regulated. So if you're buying foods that say natural or supplements that say natural, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Um, organic does, but natural does not. Some supplements you are taking, you may not be absorbing. I'll go into that a little bit further too. Um, always get supplements from a trusted brand and also always check for allergens. Um, if you're gluten sensitive, do, uh, dairy sensitive, soy sensitive, or have true allergies to anything, always check that bottle to make sure that there's no allergens in there for you. So I, this is the thing I can't stress enough with supplements is the quality of them. So price, I'm not talking about price, I'm looking, talking about the quality of the supplement. So the supplement business is a billion dollar business. Centrum is a multi-billion dollar business. Um, it does not mean that it's a good supplement or that's one that we should use. So when we're looking at them, we always want to make sure that what it contains is stated on the label and the amounts listed. They're standardized from batch to batch. Supplement is free of harmful levels of contaminants, potential drug contaminants. And it does not contain any undeclared ingredients. So maybe you guys heard a few years back when they did some studies on some supplements that were not pharmaceutical grade and what that claimed to be in there was not actually what was in that bottle. So that's why we always wanna buy what I call pharmaceutical grade products. These products practice good manufacturing practices. So when you're looking at the bottle, GMP should be on there. USP verifies that it contains the ingredients on the ingredient list. You wanna look for companies that do do FDA audited or third party testing. So that means that they are testing each batch to make sure what they're claiming in there is actually in there. I only use pharmaceutical grade supplements. This means that that product contains 99% of what they, uh, purity with no binders. Oops, sorry. Let me get back to that one. Mm -hmm. One second. Went a little too far. Okay, here we go no binders, extant dyes, unknown substances, and it's also tested for maximum absorption. So they actually do testing on their supplements to make sure that your body is absorbing them. That is the big thing. Um, and it's also held to standards as FDA regulated as, um, held to the same standards as FDA regulated drugs are. So when looking for supplements, I always try to go for the pharmaceutical grade. The thing with pharmaceutical grade is you can usually only find them through a licensed practitioner. Um, so that is one thing to uh, be aware of too. Um, they use standard operating procedures, methods of the procedures. And like I said, they lab test all finished products to identify that the right ingredients are in there, the strength is in there and the purity is in there. And they also do a lot of testing to make sure, okay, what exactly dosage does the body need? Right? Like I said, more is not always better. So when you see some of those supplements that have 500,000 of the recommended daily allowance on them, we always want to look at that and say, okay, is that something that I should be taking? And is that safe to be taking? Um, so like I said, each and every batch should be tested. So take a look at your supplements, see, okay, what type of quality are they? Um, what brand are they? Um, and see, does it fit into these categories. So most supplements are synthetic. That means that they contain extracted isolated vitamins or minerals um, that have been synth synthetically produced in a laboratory and most often have been standardized for potency. Um, there are some what we call food supplements out there and those would be different than a synthetic supplement, right? One of the big things too that we look for in a high quality supplement is capsules over tablets. So if you've ever taken like a Centrum or a women's one a day and it comes in one hard tablet that you take a day, um, you just have to take one. Some people say that that upsets their stomach. The reason being is it just kind of sits and turns in your stomach acid because it's such a dense pill um, that your body has a lot of trouble breaking that off. <clears throat> a lot of times we maybe break down probably 20% of that supplement. So when we get capsules, your body is not, can break those down a lot easier. You're absorbing a lot more of that, probably closer to the 100% mark, right? So, but that means sometimes you're taking four capsules over one tablet, but I tell people it is worth it. So a lot of multivitamins that are pharmaceutical grade 
would come as a four capsule over just one tablet. Chelated, if you ever see that on a supplement, that means it's a more absorbable form of a mineral. So you might see like chelated magnesium, um, something like that on the label. If you are someone that's taking folic acid or you're taking B12, make sure you're using these forms of it. These are the absorbable forms of folic acid and the absorbable forms of B12. I know a lot of times people do take B12. Um, and so just make sure that that is a form that you are taking on your supplement bottle. Another thing that you're gonna find too, oxide. So magnesium oxide is a very popular one out there. Um, avoid as it is not absorbable. It's extremely low absorbability. Can also have some GI upset. So I always say, well, do not use oxide blends. I'll get into some different forms of magnesium to be using instead. Um, but oxide is a cheap, um, a cheap blend and it's not absorbable. Also, if you're someone that takes gummies, unfortunately, I know they taste really good. Um, sometimes they're like a little treat, but they're usually not therapeutic doses. Um, and they also usually do can contain sugar and artificial ingredients. So if you were to get the therapeutic dose for some of your gummies, a lot of times you have quite a bit of sugar coming in during the week. Um, and so I tell people we'll use liquids, gels, or powders if you are unable to swallow pills. For example, I know our vitamin D that we carry here comes in a liquid form. Um, a lot of our stuff comes in pill or powder form. So if the pill is an issue, let's look for those other options for you instead. If you do know anybody um, or you have a um, child that is in sport, um, just make sure they're using NSF that's certified for sport supplements, especially if they are in college. Um, it needs to have this label if an athlete is using it in case they are tested. It means that it is safe for them to be using. So where do we start? There's so many supplements out there. I have people that come in and they're on 20 different supplements, right? It can get pretty overwhelming. Um, and so we want to be able to build that foundation. So I tell people where to start with supplements. First, I always tell people, we'll get your labs done. Um, here at Odom, we do do all blood work. So if you are looking to get labs redrawn um, to see, okay, what might I be missing? Um, what might be low? I tell people to start there always. And then um, a practitioner can help you kind of dose your supplements from there. Um, if that's something that you kind of had done and you're like, I just want to build a foundation or kind of fill in my nutrient gaps, a safe place to start is to start with a multivitamin, fish oil, vitamin D, magnesium. Um, and some people need probiotics. It's not something that everybody know, needs. I know it's very trendy out there right now, but I tell people kind of find that foundation. So a multivitamin, what we say about a multivitamin is this insurance policy that you're getting the nutrients that you need daily. Uh, most of us eat only on average nine to 17 foods throughout the week. So you can tell that we're probably missing a pretty big nutrient base. I know that some people, especially with their vegetables, maybe they only eat broccoli and carrots, that's it. They don't like any other ones. Or they eat kind of chicken for every meal as their protein. So if we're kind of that type of person, which a lot of people are, like I said, we can get in patterns with our food. Um, then I'd say, try to use a multivitamin. You can even take it every other day. It just fills in those gaps. Um, and once again, this is one of those where you wanna look for capsules and not hard tablets um, and spend the extra money on a pharmaceutical grade because you are gonna break it down. When I have people switch their supplements, a lot of times they truly do notice. They say, you know, I notice now that I'm taking it. I notice my energy is better. I notice those types of things. Whereas before they're kind of like, yeah, I couldn't really tell I was taking a supplement. So fish oil, um, this is an extremely important one. It's called essential because we need them for ideal health, but the body cannot produce them on their own. So it's very beneficial for cardiovascular health, especially if you're trying to look to increase your HDL, um, supports healthy brain function and cognition and mood. So we use it for people a lot of times with depression, anxiety, really good for eye health or dry eyes, um, joint comfort. Um, because of that inflammatory balance piece. So fish oil is very anti-inflammatory. Um, and so we look to that a lot of times if somebody has a lot of inflammation, uh, one of the first things I'll do is I'll put them on fish oil um, to see if we can bring that down. For example, if they have achy joints or kind of an, even an injury, um, let's see if we can bring the inflammation side of things down. 
big thing with fish oil is I cannot stress um, enough the quality of your fish oil. I tell people if you're gonna buy one that's more expensive, buy your fish oil more expensive. Um, so pharmaceutical grades are usually in a triglyceride form, which are more efficiently digested and therefore 70% more absorbable than when they're in the ethyl ester form. So most fish oils that are not pharmaceutical grade are in that ethyl ester form. A lot of times they also can be um, three years allowed before they even bottle them. Whereas a pharmaceutical grade is usually a three weeks when they bottle it up. So just a lot more pure form of the omega-3 and also usually a better balance of that EPA to DHEA. We usually look for um, a dose, usually around 1200 milligrams is usually what's safe for most people. Um, sometimes people go higher, some people, sometimes people are lower, but if we're looking at kind of what we say balance out that ratio of our omega sixes to threes. So sixes are more inflammatory fat. Unfortunately, they are in most of our foods. Um, we get a lot of omega sixes in our diet. So most people are about 25 to one from six to threes. What we want is a three to one ratio. So we usually have to take some form of fish oil to help us get to that point. So animal sources are the most absorbable form of omega-3s. Um, we have plant-based sources as well, things like olive oil, walnuts, nuts and seeds, um, those, but your body has to convert those um, from an ALA form into an omega-3. So you may be, the absorption rate's about 5% from those. And so I love that people are eating those. I want people to keep eating those. But if you're not eating fatty fish, such as wild salmon, sardines, anchovies, mackerel, then you for sure need to be um, supplementing with fish oil. Um, uh, and that would be a daily thing for you to be doing. So fish oil, extremely important. I love this supplement for most anybody to be taking. So vitamin D with K2. So vitamin D, we call it our sunshine vitamin. Obviously we're not getting any today. Um, living up north is almost impossible to get adequate vitamin D. So those, this is one of those vitamins that I say, like we cannot get enough through our food. We have to usually always supplement this one, okay? So we want a vitamin D level between 50 and 80 is ideal. There's very few foods that contain vitamin D. Um, up north, we maybe have a couple months out of the whole year that we can absorb it and get enough. So um, we always encourage that you get your vitamin D levels tested to truly see where you're at. Most people are coming back in the teens um, when we're supposed to be closer to 50. It can really affect um, energy level, our immune system. Um, it plays a key role in supporting cardiovascular health, um, diabetes refining now, cancer, a lot of things are linked to vitamin D. Um, we also are finding out a lot more with K2 and bone health. So finding out that K2 really helps us when we're eating calcium, we want to be able to absorb that into our, take it from our bloodstream and absorb it into our bone. And that's what K2 does. It brings it from the blood into the bone to help support that bone health piece of things, which is so important for us. So we might be eating calcium, but you need other nutrients with it, such as vitamin D and K2, and also magnesium, which we'll talk about here in a moment, to really absorb your calcium that you're taking. Um, uh, most people are safe with around 2,000 international units daily. But like I said, I always recommend getting your levels checked because you may need a lot more than that if you are really low, um, or that might be the right dose for you. And I also tell people, don't forget about your kids and vitamin D. Um, make sure that they're getting their levels checked too, because their levels get low as well during the winter months. Um, if you're noticing their energy's down or they're getting sick a lot, make sure that they get their vitamin D levels checked too. Vitamin D, the other thing I should notice, it is a, I mentioned it is a fat soluble vitamin. So if you want to maximize the absorption of this, eat it with fat or take it with your fish oil, because fat soluble vitamin needs to be taken with fat to absorb it better. So if you find like you're taking a lot of vitamin D, but your level is just not going up, um, try taking it with a fatty meal or taking it with your fish oil. Magnesium is one that we're learning a lot about. 80% of the population is now deficient in magnesium. So magnesium and vitamin D are probably our biggest deficiencies. Um, magnesium is part of a thousand different systems in our body. 
but um, it can be, uh, levels can be decreased to excess of intake of alcohol, salt, coffee, phosphoric acid and sodas, diets high in calcium, um, high stress levels if we sweat or work out a lot um, can also be a factor. So adequate daily intake of magnesium is critical for proper hydration, stress response, muscle relaxation. Um, we're finding for healthy blood pressure levels even um, and optimal bone mineral density and blood sugar regulation. So like I said, we need all four of those um, calcium, vitamin D and K2 and magnesium for proper bone health. Um, so don't forget that magnesium piece of things. If you get a lot of, some people get muscle cramps at night um, that sometimes is a indicator of um, magnesium, needing some of that. Um, also, if you kind of get restless legs, that can be another part of it as well. Um, so it's best to use a blend rather than a single form of magnesium. And like I said, do not use oxide. So there's glycinate, there's malate, there is citrate. Um, citrate is really meant to make the bowels move. So if you struggle with constipation, that would be a big one. If you do not, I would not use citrate. Um, the one that we carry here is a blend. So it's really gentle on the system. I always recommend taking it before bedtime. Dosage is around 400 milligrams um, because it does help people relax before bed. It really brings their system down um, and just kind of brings that relaxation in and they're able to fall asleep a lot easier. There are some food sources of this as well. So pumpkin seeds, nuts, whole grains, leafy greens, dark chocolate. So try to incorporate all of these into your diet as well. But magnesium is one that sometimes diet just isn't enough because we burn through it so fast in so many ways. But it would simply be including these foods too um, in your diet. So probiotics. Um, most of you might know that probiotics we look at for gut health. So gut health is our key to overall health, right? If our gut is not healthy, we're not absorbing the foods that we're eating very well anyways. Um, we also care, call it our second brain. So many things are made in our gut. Um, our immune system, so 70% of our immune system in, gut, in our gut, a lot of our hormones are made there. So we want a healthy gut for our body to be functioning properly. So probiotics promote healthy gut microflora, um, intestinal integrity and help boost immune function. Um, so what probiotics do is they help put the good bacteria back in our system. We have what we call good and bad bacteria. We need both of them. We just need the right balance. A lot of times that balance can get off through um, antibiotics or medications, um, excess of alcohol consumption, stress. If we're not sleeping because that's when our body repairs and that's when our body digests. Um, a poor dietary intake, such as a diet high in sugar, high in processed carbs, all of those things will feed what we call the bad bacteria or yeast, um, more of that. And so you can find that we get that imbalance in there. So you may have some digestive issues going on. Um, if you don't, I don't feel that everybody needs a probiotic, then I would say really go through your food sources of having throughout the week, using sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir, kombucha, yogurt, um, pickled vegetables, making sure to incorporate those at least a couple times throughout the week and using a variety of them because they're gonna provide different bacteria strains for you. And also with probiotics, sometimes switching up your probiotic or you can also start with a really strong one. Let's say you are having a lot of uh, digestive issues starting strong and then backing down to more of a maintenance one. Um, and so that's something that if you're having some <coughs> issues, that can help you with if you're not sure where to start um, but probiotics, um, are a big piece of things. Now you'll even see like drinks that are probiotic drinks and all this kind of stuff. Um, but remember that probiotics do need what we call prebiotics to feed that. And that's in fiber. So make sure that you're eating a lot of fiber in your diet as well. So that if you're taking those probiotics, it has something to feed it. So, and then we kind of get to the specialty supplements. There's, like I said, lots of different um, reasons out there. I'm not going to get into them, but specific reasons and timeframes, example, you might stay on them for six months and then retest. One of those might be iron. If you came in and you had low iron levels, um, we might put you on iron for a certain period of time, retest you, see if you still need it, or if your levels are um, back to normal levels. Um, B12 might be another one of those. And so sometimes supplements aren't something that we need to stay on long term. Some of them are used for a short period of time, and then your body's able to do it alone, or 
we look at your diet and say, okay, your iron's low. How do we incorporate more high iron foods and supplement you at the same time to get your level up and then just keep you on the high iron foods to be able to um, hold that level and be able to take you off the supplement. So that's always the goal at times. Um, other ones, turmeric is one that people are using a lot for inflammation right now. Um, collagen is one that people are using for joint and kind of tissue issues, cosamine for the same thing. All of these are kind of one-offs. Um, everybody's individualizing what they need. And so if you have questions, let me know, I can help you out. But just, you know, there's a lot of other supplements out there too. <clears throat> there's also convenience products. So um, protein powders, snacks, bars, protein bars, electrolyte replaces, gels and sugar <clears throat> gels. And all of these, just be aware of, once again, the quality of them. A lot of them have artificial sweeteners, ingredients, colors, dyes, um, carrageen, which is known to be kind of a stomach upsetter. Um, sugar alcohols are in a lot of protein bars. So if you see anything that ends in OL, um, that is a sugar alcohol. So those just help add sweetness, but they can cause a lot of gastric distress too. So if you're using those bars and wanting to go work out, sometimes it doesn't work that well. Um, so just be careful of all of those things. A lot of times, if there is zero grams of sugar, there is a sweetener in there. So just check to make sure, you know, is it um, aspartame, is it sucralose, sugar alcohols, or is it stevia? I would say the one that you're the most safe with is like stevia or monk fruit um, in there. Um, so just be really careful of those. Same thing with protein powders, buy a high quality brand. Um, there's all different, there's plant-based, there's whey, which is dairy-based, there's bone broth protein powders out there. So really just check those out and make sure that there's not a lot of fillers in there. So kind of closing thoughts, we should not rely on supplements to get our nutrients. Food should be our first choice. At times food is not enough and that's when supplements may become necessary. So big takeaways, not all supplements are created equal. So like I said, I really encourage you not to look at the price point, but to look at the quality of the supplement, because a lot of times it's going to be a lot more potent and you get more for your money. So for example, the fish oil that we carry here is orthomolecular. You take one of ours to four of a um, different brands. So it might seem like it's less expensive, but you end up having to take more of the other one. Buy from a trusted source that uses third-party testing. Like I said, that would be your pharmaceutical grade. Um, supplements do not replace healthy eating. I have a lot of people that think that if they take supplements, they can kind of eat and drink what they want. Um, no, it does not replace you eating a healthy diet or eating fiber in your diet, those types of things. Consult with a health professional before adding supplements in. If anybody has questions on any supplements they should be taking or if they're taking too many, I do find a lot of times that people have kind of kept adding in supplements and before you know it, they're doubling up or tripling up on a lot of vitamins, minerals, and they're kind of, they're taking too much in the end. Um, so you can easily, a lot of supplements have vitamin C, a lot have zinc, a lot have vitamin D in them. Um, and so by the end, when you add it all up, you're taking too high of doses. So just make sure you're looking at all of those, um, looking at the back closely and adding all of that up. A lot of times when people come in, they'll bring all the supplements. And a lot of times we can um, look at those and kind of cut some out for them. Um, and like I said, don't take too much of a nutrient or overdose. And also don't believe the claims that are too good to be true. Um, just kind of look at finding, like I said, that foundation of your supplements and going from there and then kind of getting those one-offs for what would be more individualized for you. For example, if you have joint pain, um, what would you need to take, um, to get that up? Or if you're a veg vegan, you know, do you need maybe some B12 or iron in there? Um, but just make sure you're checking that out. And like I said, <clears throat> you can always do labs to see what you're missing. Um, and I also forgot to mention too, that we did record this. So this uh, presentation will be up on our website in the next couple of days. So if you did uh, join a little late or you kind of missed a couple of slides, um, you can go back and watch it as well. Um, from there, I will open it up to questions from anybody. Hey, Bobby, this is Steve Pierce. I'll jump yeah. in and uh, oh, good seeing your face. And I gotta tell you, this is super helpful. So thank you for doing it. Um, the uh, uh, the magnesium thing, sure enough, I look at the label and thinking I got a trusted brand, spent a lot of money on it, and there it says magnesium as magnesium oxide. So no question, big takeaway. Yep. Um, when I look at fish oil, though, um, you said there's one to stay away from, and it was something about ester. 
Um, and I, I look at the details on the label and I just don't see, I, uh, there was a couple of different terms you said on, on fish oil. Um, I see esopateric acid or docohexa something. I, 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 take me back to fish oil, please. Yeah. And uh, would ester be stated in some other way? Um, more than likely not, because more than likely they're not disclosing the whole thing. Um, and so <laughs> I'm trying to think of on our fish oil if it tells us truly on the bottle if it's a triglyceride form. Actually, I, I believe it does. Okay, it's triglyceride though. That is yeah, the opposite word. Triglyceride form is what you want to look for on the for uh, fish oil, and that is your most absorbable form of fish oil. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions from anyone? I'll ask another one in that case. Yeah. Um, go back to how, how do you know if each batch was tested. I see USP on several labels here, mm -hmm. but you said something about each batch being tested. Is there a separate label that is added? Yeah, let me see if I can get back to that slide here. One second. Yeah, so if we look at, yep, USP verifies that the product contains the ingredients listed. Um, same thing with GMP, they're following those good manufacturing practices. Um, if you know it's pharmaceutical grade, then you 100% know that each batch was tested um, because that's to be pharmaceutical grade, it has to be. Um, and Does it so say the word pharmaceutical grade on it when you buy it? How would you know if it is or not? Uh, you usually, so pharmaceutical grade is only going to be available through like a clinic. So okay. a licensed practitioner. Yep. Some okay. you can get on Amazon. I don't trust Amazon a lot of times because somebody just rebuying that or reselling them. Um, and so, or you can go to their true website, like um, different brands are uh, orthomolecular, metagenics, thorn, um, standard process, um, uh, nutrition dynamics. Um, those are examples of a couple of the pharmaceutical grade supplements out there. Okay, got it. Super helpful. Thank yep. you. Yep. Any other questions? Everyone's quiet. Okay. This John, yep. Oh, this is John Marshall. I'm uh, 63 and I'm uh, retiring and I'm hiking the Appalachian Trail. And I've had, I had a, a knee uh, uh, ACL injury like 40 years ago and my knee is starting to bother me a little bit. Anything for joints that you'd suggest? Yeah. So for joints, the two things I really love is collagen. Um, really helps and also fish oil really helps. So fish oil helps bring down that inflammation in the joint and also helps lubricate the joint. Um, collagen helps come in and repair some of those tissues in there. So that's why I like both of those and I use them in combination with each other um, to really get that maximum benefit. So those are two that I use probably the most often for kind of knee joint issues. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions anyone thought about? Oh, how much is the blood work up for, for you with you guys? Yes, yeah, so we do take insurance um, and we also do cash pay. So it just depend on the lab that you would want done. We also can do like, for instance, just one, like we can do just vitamin D testing, or we can do a whole panel of blood labs. So at, you know, if you're running it through insurance, we have that option. Otherwise we have cash pay and that would just depend on what um, labs you would want done. And we could help you uh, figure out the cost of that. Okay, thanks. Yep. Some of us had to have our, haven't had our labs done for 
feel like a lot of times people are a little bit behind on their labs right now, just due to the last two years of um, COVID and not really going to the doctor. So I'm kind of encouraging everybody to get in and get some labs done. It tells us a lot about what's going on inside. Um, sometimes we can feel great on the outside, but that lab, those lab values just give us an indicator of, okay, what's truly going on inside and where's our health at? I just got mine all done the other week too. I was a little bit behind. So it's always interesting to see. And labs are changeable, I tell people. It's just kind of a, a starting point and then shows us, okay, are we at a good spot or do we need to make some changes? Well, this is Cindy Degner. I have a question. Do you know if um, the brand Natural Factors is a pharmaceutical grade? Um, uh, I believe it is. Um, I would have to look for sure though. Yeah, I bought it through my health food a little co-op store. Yep. So co-ops um, are not always pharmaceutical grade, but they are a higher quality um, than you would buy at like a Target or GNC. So um, they usually are a pretty good supplement. So, yep. Right. Thanks. I said that mid-grade, I tell people. So usually they're pretty good. If, hi, Megan Adams here. Hi. If we were to schedule to get our labs done and go over the supplements that we're taking, what would we, how would we schedule that or what would we ask for? Yep, you can call uh, the front desk and say that you would like to get your labs drawn. If you want to go through insurance, we will schedule you with Dr. Odom um, and Mike will do a lab draw for you. And then once those labs are in, we will schedule you for a follow-up with either Dr. Odom or I to go through your labs and look at your supplements. So if you just call in and say, I need my labs drawn, I'm gonna do insurance, or if you need to do cash pay, then it's just a quick lab draw. And then we can make an appointment with me afterwards to go through your results and uh, look through your supplements. Does that make answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yep. So we do offer both cash pay or insurance based. Your choice. Any other questions? Hey, Bobby, uh, yeah. Steve Pierce again. Protein powder. Yeah. My kids take a lot of that stuff. I mean, they do exercise, but it, but my gosh, it just seems ridiculous. Uh, can you just comment on the need for it? Yeah. Um, and is it is it at all age related? I'm 58. Is it, is it something that for people that are exercising, um, you know, as you get older that it's recommended or stay away from? Just appreciate any comments. Yeah. So with protein powders, like I say, I always try to get protein through food first. But a lot of times when we have, um, let's say, athletes that are extremely active, we have trouble getting enough um, protein or calories in general in them through just food. So sometimes liquid calories work very well for them as just kind of supplementing that food side of things. Um, I tell people don't rely on them too much, just use them as needed. Um, so, you know, the max we say, and I think this is even too much is 80 grams of protein a day from protein shakes. And that's for somebody that's like a very elite athlete, right? Um, otherwise I say a lot of times people like to have like a smoothie for breakfast. Um, so they're using protein powder once a day. I tell people that's just fine. Um, and then the rest of your meals try to get a real food source for protein. Um, with age, um, a lot of times people don't realize that once we hit kind of 60 and over, we actually need a little bit more protein to maintain our muscle. And so sometimes as we get older too, if we hit kind of those older years, protein doesn't taste as good to us or we kind of lose the taste for it. And that's then once again, we're all use those liquid supplements as needed for people too. Um, and so, and also if somebody is vegan or vegetarian, also trying to get in those, the protein or good high quality protein sources sometimes can be difficult for them as well. Not everybody, or some people do a great job with it. Um, but that's another time where I'll use, um, the liquid calories, or if somebody is trying to put on weight, um, it's hard to eat enough solid food. Liquid can also uh, be beneficial too. So age really doesn't matter. It's just how much of it you would need at certain ages. Okay. And then the number you said, if I wanted to just uh, helicopter parent a little bit, was yeah. 80? Uh, I would say for a, a 
uh, teenagers, I'd probably say like 60. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Very helpful. So this is Cindy again. I was wondering what you think about the collagen supplements. Yeah, so collagen is a very trendy supplement out there right now. Um, so once again, just be careful of what you're buying. There's five types of collagen, um, type one, two, three, four, five. Inside your body, type one and type two are the most, um, are about 90% of the collagen in your system. So I always look for supplements that stress or that are higher in type one and type two collagens. Otherwise, uh, a lot of times there can be a lot of fillers in there. And so that's what I look for. And then also, more. this is another time where more collagen is not better. I know for me, I'd want to take as much as possible to see if it, you know, made me look 10 years younger. Um, but 10 grams is the most that you should take a day. Um, a lot of supplements contain more than that per scoop. So look at your collagen and see, okay, is it 10 grams or less? Um, the reason being is you can be more prone to kidney stones if you take more than that. So just be careful with the amount on that one. I know it's all over kind of social media as kind of the anti-aging um, thing right now, but uh, just be careful of that. And type one and type two are what you want the majority of your supplement to be collagen. Thanks. And, and do you think it works more? Do you think it helps with um, muscle mass as you get older? Um, muscle mass, I don't know so much muscle mass, but it really helps with for what I notice is um, the healing and keeping uh, tendons and tissues healthy and ligaments healthy. Um, so that's what I've noticed more so is kind of less injury or being able to recover from injuries or kind of those aches and those little nagging injuries go away. Um, and so it's, so that's kind of how I use collagen more so. Um, I use true kind of protein or amino acids for more of that muscle building or to keep muscle. But collagen is a very great thing um, that I recommend for a lot of people, just for a little bit different reason than true muscle building. Any other questions? Hmm. Great, you guys. Well, if any other questions come up, reach out um, to me. Um, I'm happy to answer any more. Or if you'd like to schedule um, some blood work or appointment just to go through your supplements, uh, you can give the front desk a call too. And like I said, this was recorded, so it will be up on the website too if you missed any of it. Um, Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining today. And um, hopefully we will see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.